I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about trigonometric substitution. In problem number 43, we'd like to evaluate the integral of x cubed divided by 81 minus x squared quantity squared dx. And it, as in all of these types of problems, we want to start out asking the question, well, what type of trigonometric substitution are we dealing with here? And here we have the form uh, a squared minus x squared, a squared minus x squared. And the type of trigonometric substitution that that gives me is that x should be a sine theta. a in this case is 9 because this is a squared. So I get a sine theta. And now I can figure out my dx. dx is 9 cosine theta d theta. All right, so now we're ready to make the substitution. Uh, I get the integral of x cubed. So I get 9 sine of theta cubed. So I'll just write that as 9 cubed times sine uh, of theta cubed uh, times dx. Now dx is 9 uh, cosine theta d theta. All right, so all of that is on top. The bottom is 81 minus x squared x is 9 sine of theta, so that's 81 uh, sine squared of theta squared. Okay, I've made my substitution. Now let's try to simplify this down a little bit. First of all, I notice that I have an 81 here. 81 is 9 squared. 9 squared squared is 9 to the 4th. So I can factor out of this thing an 81, and then if I bring it out of the square, it's 81 squared, or 9 to the 4th. So let's write it that way. Up on top, notice I also have 9 cubed times 9, which is 9 to the 4th. So I have 9 to the 4th on the top, and I have 9 to the 4th on the bottom. Then I have integral of sine cubed theta times cosine theta d theta divided by, on the bottom I have 1 minus sine squared theta quantity squared. And now those 9 to the fourth just cancel and I'm left with something that looks a little bit better. Now, 1 minus sine squared of theta we know is cosine squared theta. So let's just plug in here for cosine squared of theta. Uh, I'll rewrite that one more time down here. This is equal to integral of sine cubed theta times cosine of theta d theta all over. This is cosine squared of theta squared. So this is cosine to the fourth of theta. And clearly we see that one of the cosines on top cancels with one of the cosines on bottom, and now we have a cosine cubed of theta on bottom. But let's rewrite again. So this is equal to integral of sine cubed theta uh, over cosine cubed theta d theta. Now, I see I have some sines floating around, I have some cosines floating around, but what I see right off the bat is the powers of sine and cosine are both odd. And when that happens, I think, okay, can I just break one of those off and convert everything else over to the other? Like, to, uh, let's make one sine come off and turn the other two sines into cosines. I think I can do that. Let's try it. So I'm going to rewrite this thing as the integral of 
One of these sine thetas I'm going to write right here, sine theta. Then I also have times sine squared of theta. But sine squared of theta could also be written as 1 minus cosine squared theta. d theta on top and on the bottom I have cosine cubed of theta. Cosine cubed theta. Now we can make a u substitution for cosine theta. So let's make a substitution. u is cosine of theta. du is what? Negative sine theta d theta. So to make the substitution, I need a negative on the inside, which means I have a negative on the outside of the integral. Now I'm ready to make my substitution. I still have that negative on the outside of the integral. And on the inside, I have 1 minus u squared divided by u cubed du. Or, if you prefer, I could break this into two fractions, and this is u to the negative 3 minus u to the negative 1 du. And now we can just use the power rule on this guy to take the antiderivative. So I have negative. Antiderivative of u to the negative 3 is u to the negative 2 divided by negative 2. So times negative 1 half. Then antiderivative of u to the negative 1, I still have that negative there, but it's ln of absolute value of u and then I need my plus C. All right, we're almost done here. What is U? Well, U is cosine of theta. So let's put that back in. By the way, I can distribute this negative and just all the negatives go away. So I get one over two times, this is on the bottom, it's a u squared, so the cosine squared theta is on the bottom, plus ln of absolute value of cosine of theta plus c. We're very, very close. Um, I need to know what is cosine of theta. Well, I know what sine of theta is, so I should be able to use a reference triangle to figure out what cosine of theta is. So let me erase a little bit here. And we'll draw a reference triangle. We know right off the bat that sine theta is equal to x over 9. And if sine theta is x over 9, then we can use our reference triangle. Let's see. Uh, if this is our theta, then we've got opposite is x, hypotenuse is 9, which means that this guy is the square root of 81 minus x squared. Okay, so now that I know that, I can use that to give me cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. All right, so let's uh, just write in the answer here. I'll write it right down here. I have uh, 1 over cosine squared of theta. So this cosine squared of theta is on the bottom, so I could take instead the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So it's the hypotenuse squared, which is 81, uh, over 2 times this square root squared, which is 81 minus x squared. All right, plus ln of the absolute value of cosine theta, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, 81 minus x squared over the hypotenuse, which is 9, plus c. So my final answer should be 81 halves uh, times 1 over 81 minus x squared plus ln of square root 81 minus x squared over 9 plus c. And we're all done.